The content of this channel is for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. You're tuned in to the Green Gorilla channel. Please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification button. And please, feel free to share the video. Thank you.
What's cracking, everybody? I'm the G with a PhD, and you're tuned in to the Green Gorilla Channel, the place where black men can express themselves freely, straight up with no chasers. But right now, it's time to take care of some business. I got to give a shout out to all of the members of the Green Gorilla Channel. Let's get to it. I want to give a shout out to Ab Media, NJ Progressive Envy, Damon Harris, Brian McMurray, Ethan Hines, Mr. Lou Meth, TD Hip Hop Media, Drew Main, Shop Talk Live, Jones Boy, Ryan Jackson, The Face, Mr. Heat, David the Man, Afro Analyst, NEU, Ronan Martin, Black Wizard, ADOS, Camp Low, Issa Abdul Sahir, Sir Anthony, Deshaun Nolly, Aaron Lloyd, MLR, Charles Rogers, Black Dog, Brother Love, Infamous Chillin', Universal 178, Black Square 404, Rashid Barnes, Aaron Smith, DH, C Truth the Revelator, Gold Professor, The Nameless Protagonist, Black Peel Ned Stark, Arthur Unknown, Odd Collard, Roderick Jackson, Dr. Tia San Johnson, Brian Williams, Kalan Jakala, Sherrod Martin, Ricky Dawson, Cedric Bowman, True 7360, BK Born Shaheed, James Washington, Hostel Adept, Seventh Coast Dojo, WPR1, Roguish the Billmonger, I Care Force Windu, Lady Miss Thing Green, BJS Ivmore, and Marvin Battle Jr. Thank you so much for being members of the Green Gorilla Channel. Thank you. Thank you for being members of the Green Gorilla Channel. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. So I'm going to skip the... Uh, how to become a member of the Green Gorilla Channel video today. Um, and I want to kind of get right into what I want to talk about. We're going to talk about Robert Staples and what he has to say about the black family. And I thought it would be interesting to go through this article and, uh, you know, given that we've read a few of his articles before. And I might just read half of this because it's rather lengthy and it's a Friday. And, you know, I don't want to saddle you down uh, with, you know, rhetoric and uh, academic treatises. So I just want to get right into it. And after having gotten to it uh, by cutting it short, um, I'll bid you farewell and you can enjoy your Friday evening. I want to give a shout out to Michael Ross. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind contribution. I appreciate it. Every little bit helps and goes towards me improving the quality of the quality of the content of the channel. Thank you so much, sir. And also, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Heat. He says he can't join us tonight. And I'm so, so sorry that you can't. But he also gave a donation over the cash app. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So uh, let's just get right into this, man. I'm going to share this screen. And we're going to go over an article written by Robert Staples, and it's entitled Changes in Black Family Structure, the Conflict Between Family Ideology and Structural Conditions. And it's an interesting article. I mean, I haven't read through the entirety of it, and I kind of wanted to wait before I read through it all in order to, you know, have my reaction be natural as opposed to forced and contrived. But having said that, I want to go over this. Uh, you know, a lot of people make complaints about women. Women make complaints about men. I just want to see what a scholar has to say about it. And a scholar, by the way, who was writing in the 70s. So let's get right, let's get right to it. So this article was written, uh, speaking of time, it was written in 85. Okay. Some of you may not have even been born in 85. Or many of you have. Uh, dates of birth after the 80s. Um, some of you were born before the 80s. But this particular article was written in November of 1985. Okay? Um, so, again, the article is entitled Changes in Black Family Structure, The Conflict Between Family Ideology and Structural Conditions. Okay? So here's the abstract of the article. Okay, 
The family ideology of black Americans is compared with actual family arrangements and lifestyles. The dissonance between the two is explained by the intervention of structural conditions that prevent the fulfillment of normative familial, ro uh, familial roles by black males. Exchange theory is used to explain the conflict between family ideology and structural conditions. In general, black women fail to marry or remain married when the costs outweigh the benefits of such an arrangement. Now, I'm just going to tell you at first glance, it doesn't sound good for black males, what he's about to say. Okay? Now, you can love him or hate him, agree with him or disagree with him, but I want to see what his take is on the black family. Now, already you're seeing he's saying there's an ideal that black people have about the family. And then there's the reality of the structural conditions of black people in the United States or in the Americas. And it just seems to me what he's going to say is that black men aren't able to live up to the family ideology or the ideals established or set out, right, as it pertains to family life and the prosperity and the functionality of families in general, all right? So it just seems like he's putting a great big tag on black men's backs, a target, right? Oh, well, let's just get through it, okay? And I'm only going to read half of it because I don't feel like going through the emotional exchange tonight. But I'm going to give you what I got, okay? So basically, he starts off by saying, historically, family theorists have argued that family structure and achievement interact with one another. So if you got achievement, you get family structure, they, you know, they interact. No achievement, no, I guess, functional family structure. I guess that's what the claim being made is here. Okay? So he makes reference to the sociologists or the academicians who study this, Parson and Bales and Good. All right. And then he says, while that may have some validity for certain ethnic groups in America, none of those groups share the history and current social conditions of the black population in the U.S. You got that right. The peculiar history of black Americans combined with structural conditions inimical. That's a fancy word for. You know. Fucked up. <laughs> the conditions screwed up to family formation and maintenance have precipitated, have brought forward a crisis in the black family. The basic theoretic, uh, theoretical perspective that informs the present analysis of black family life is that of exchange theory. So he's about to give us an outline, a definition of a theory. In this case, exchange theory. Now, I don't know much about exchange theory, but I can pretty much glean that it has to do with give and take, right? Re re reciprocity of some kind. You give me something, I give you something. I can pretty much glean that. So this theory focuses on the reinforcement patterns, the history of rewards and costs that lead people to do what they do. Essentially, it argues that people will continue to do what they have found rewarding in the past. So if it works, you do it. Or if you feel like you're being rewarded, it's the best possible outcome, you do it. Okay? The basic premise here is that certain kinds of family structures exist when there is an exchange of rewards. On the other hand, family arrangements that are costly to one or both parties are much less likely to continue. Okay? So if one or, uh, or both parties don't like the exchange or they're too costly, they discontinue the family arrangement. That's what he's basically saying. All right? I can see where this is going. I, I can already tell you where this is going. But let's get through it. Let's go to it. We assume first that being married is important to the majority of blacks. Really? Especially women. Really? <laughs> I'm just, he's making an assumption here. I don't know 
why he's making this assumption, but he is making the assumption. Okay, women want to get married. That's what he's saying. Okay, but he's almost making marriage a kind of distributive exchange, like a cash exchange, like how you go to the grocery store and you pay the cashier for something. Right? That's the exchange. So women got to get something, men got to get something, and if the exchange is not living up to the expectation, then the exchange does not occur. I guess that's where he's going with this, right? The fact that a near majority of black Americans are not married and living in traditional nuclear family units is not a result of any devaluation of marriage, qua institution, but rather a function of limited choices to find individuals in a restricted and small pool of potential partners who can successfully fulfill the normatively prescribed familial roles. So, I mean, he's basically saying there's a lack of suitable candidates for marriage. I know where he's going with this, and he's going to say among the pool of black males who are available to be married, they are not prime candidates related to marriage. This is what he's going to say. I, I, I guarantee you this is where this is going. All right? Man, I could tell you where this is going. Okay? While many blacks fail to marry, the history of black marriages shows only a minority surviving a lifetime with the same people. Exchange theory suggests that a person will not remain in a relationship where the services provided seem relatively meager compared with what the person knows about other relationships. Hmm. So in other words... They look at other people and try to determine whether or not the relationship that they have or the marriage arrangement that they're in is actually one that is optimal. So instead of working on theirs, they look at what other people have and they judge what they have predicated upon what others have. The grass is greener on the other side way of thinking about the issue. It appears then the blacks do not marry because the perceived outcome derived from knowledge of past rewards and costs is one where alternative sources of goal mediation are preferred risks. It appears then that blacks do not marry because the perceived outcome derived from knowledge of past rewards and costs is one where alternative sources of goal mediation or preferred risks. This cost-benefit analysis is mediated by structural conditions among the black male population that give rise to dissonance between black family ideology and actual family arrangements. Now, he's gone over this before. He's talked about the position of males since slavery. He's talked about how black men have been subjected to a whole host of treatments structural conditions by the society at large which put them at a disadvantage and how oftentimes even within the context of slavery black women were given an opportunity or afforded an opportunity to head the black family whereas black men were emasculated and not provided with the kind of tools necessary to actually exemplify the kind of manhood the financial, right, wherewithal to actually take care of a family. So anyway, black family ideology is the next section. The popular image of blacks as a group pressing for change in the area of race relations and economic opportunities is often translated into the image of a radical group in the forefront of social change. So, they, you know, they're... they're Black people are social justice warriors. <laughs> we want improvement, right, in race relations, and we want an improvement in economic opportunities, right? Other than being opposed to unfair discrimination against any group and favoring liberal, social, and economic policies, blacks often hold very traditional, even conservative attitudes on other social issues. Attitudes that place them in the mainstream of American mores and folkways. Now, this might have been the case in 85. It might have been the case in the 70s. But I can tell you, that's not the case now. 
That just doesn't hold true anymore. Okay? Some years ago, Robert Hill noted that blacks have a strong work, achievement, and religious, uh, religious orientation. In particular, they believe strongly in the institution of the family. Gary and his associates found that the greatest source of life satisfaction among their black subjects was family life. So, I mean, this is, it's one thing to say something, though. It's another thing to practice something. You can say you want something all day long. You can say that, you know, and when you're surveyed, that this is something that you prefer. This is something that you desire. This is something you want to be a part of. But your actions speak louder than your words. Is this the case? And then let me also say this before I even go any further. If this, if Mr. Staples in this article is trying to put forth the notion that black men have been prevented from being suitable mates to black women and growing out of slavery, then why was the marriage rate so high among black men and women prior to desegregation? They still were poor. They were still broke. We were still behind economically. The wealth gap wasn't closed. So, I, you know, I'm already taking issue with this, all right? Anyway, their unconventional family arrangements and lifestyles easily can mislead outsiders to assume that blacks are strongly in accord with newly emerging alternative family lifestyles. Come on, bruh. Come on, man. I, you can look at what's going on and you can figure out what people actually want by what's going on. I just don't subscribe. I don't believe that that's true. Anyway, he says, while they are tolerant of people, especially blacks, who live in other than nuclear families, the family ideology of most blacks is in the direction of traditional family forms. Several studies, for instance, show that black women wish to marry and maintain traditional roles in the conjugal relationship. Really? He's going, look, look at the studies that he's utilizing. Studies from the 60s and the early 70s. That's changed. One indication of the black value of marriage is the fact that in the past, more black women entered into a marital union than their white counterparts. Banged. That's the past, though. We didn't have money then. Black men didn't have a, low, a whole bunch of grip and material resources then. I'm just saying. So he says, in 1973, among black women, 65 years and older, only 3.5% had never married. Now check that out, man. That's an important statistic. That's important, man. In 73, among black women, 65 and over, only 3.5% had never married. Compared with 6.9% of white women. What the what? <laughs> Good Lord. Can, you know what that means. It means that at one particular point in time, black women were more married and were, more, were involved in family life more than white folks. Good Lord, good goobly goo. I just came out of the uh, the application, so I want to give a shout out to uh, Fast Track. Thank you so much for the donation, sir. Appreciate it. But I got to bury my head back into this document. All right. So, but that was then. This is now. Something happened. And what he's going to try to do is make the case that black men, because of structural conditions, can't fulfill the traditional familial roles. But then the question becomes, well, when were black men ever able to fulfill traditional familial roles and have a, like a cornucopia of resources to hand over to their family members? When did that ever exist? When? If you got the answer to this question, please tell me. You let me know. 
Among the most traditional of values is that of motherhood and child rearing. Except for college educated black women, almost all black women bear children unless infertile. So you get this, except for college educated black women, almost all black women have babies. <laughs> the role of mother is regarded as more important than any other role, including that of wife. Now, that might be a problem. That might be a problem right there. See, you're putting the cart before the horse. That's just my, if you want to talk about traditional family values, then the, the children are ancillary. The children are satellites to a marriage. The children are not the most important functioning part of a life between a man and a woman. They're important, but when you give children that much attention and you give them that much importance, something's bound to be lacking. That's the, that's, that's the start of the gynocracy right there. That's the initiation of the gynocracy right there. When you start to give your children the fruit of the relationship more attention than the root, the trunk of the relationship itself, then you got a value problem. But that's just my view on it. Maybe you think differently. The role of mother is regarded as more important than any other role, including that of wife. While respectful of a woman's right to control her body, blacks tend to have a more negative attitude towards abortion. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man. Look, I got to... Hey, man, this is, oh, you can tell this is old school, man, because I got to give him the, <laughs> hold on, that's the wrong sound right there, man, I, <laughs> hey, look, I got, I meant to do this, that is wrong right there, man, that's, that's not, that's not, that's not true, that's not true, Present Truth, man, I want to give you a shout out. Let me give you a bit of fanfare for that donation, man. I appreciate it, sir. I really do. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind donation, man. I appreciate it greatly. So, <laughs> can you imagine this, man? Like, I'm, like, I'm reading it, but, but he's talking about the values of women in the 70s coming out of the 60s and going into the 80s. But things have changed. If it was the case that at one point in time, black women were fully against the notion of abortion, they have bought into it wholeheartedly. Martin Sanger has been able to put her work in. Mar Margaret Sanger got them locked into this. This, because this is part and parcel of black life now. I don't know the statistics on abortion. I'm not going to even get into all of that. But I know the abortion rate amongst African Americans is stupid high. But I digress. The Zelnick and Cantor study reveals that 35% of white ter of teenagers terminated their first pregnancy by abortion compared with only 4% of black teenagers. Damn. That's a 1974 study, though. Seven Look, let me highlight that. 74. <laughs> it's 2020. I bet, you that, I bet you that looks a lot different now. However, some of this racial variation may reflect differential access to abortion rather than differential inclination. Okay, now I'll give you, I'll give you one on that. I'll give you something on that. Because they have made it accessible. It's subsidized now. In fact, they're subsidizing abortions for black women or any other group of impoverished women. They are encouraging it. But one of the things you got to be aware of is this is all part, and this is just my belief system, this is all part 
of the program of eugenics. They don't want poor people to reproduce like that. Now, I'm not saying this is the whole plan of all societies or the entirety of the culture in which we live, but there has been a high incentivization for poor, unwed mothers to receive abortions. This is just a fact, all right? And I know it's a, where I'm from, the city of St. Louis, man, the abortion clinic ain't nothing but a 15-minute ride away. On the east side, it ain't nothing but a, what, a 30-minute ride away. You can get there real quick. Trust and believe it. The black mother's child-rearing techniques are also more traditional. She is more likely than the white mother to use physical rather than verbal punishment to enforce discipline on the child. Threatening the child with withdrawal of the mother's love used by some white mothers is uncommon among black women, which is one reason that the black mother-child bond remains strong through adult life. Huh? Really? So they'll beat you, but they love you. <laughs> hey, man. Look, I'm, hey, look, let me just get through this, man. Although there has been a noticeable increase in feminist ideology among women in the last 20 years, black women are greatly underrepresented in the women's liberation movement. Oh, my God. Got to give him another sad trombone. You writing in the 85, bruh. You're writing this in the 85. So I give you a pass to some degree. But you can't get a big, big, big pass on this, though. Because you knew where this was going. You were in the academy. You had to have some knowledge of where this was going. You have to have had some kind of knowledge in the academy about where this was going. But you decided to do backward-looking research instead of looking at what was happening right at your feet but this happens though because sometimes people don't have the capacity to see the forest for the trees but i'm just speak right now i'm not even being normative about anything i'm being descriptive i'm reading the text and i'm determining whether or not i agree with the proclamations he's making i'm not issuing any proclamation about the moral propriety or impropriety of either men or women at this point i'm speaking about what's happening now versus what was happening then or what he perceived was happening then and the value systems and the axiology of black men and women at that time or thoughts or ideals about the black family at that time. That's what I'm doing. So don't get it twisted. I'm not making any moral proclamations at all right now. I'm just describing the way things are, the way I see it. <laughs> black women are greatly underrepresented in the women's liberation movement many black women continue to perceive racism not sexism as the biggest obstacle to their career and family what goals that ain't the case now bruh that's not the case now i can tell you because right now we don't hear all these conversations about racism we hear conversations about the patriarchy that's what we hear. And how there's a such thing as black male privilege. Now, this is funny, though. The, only, the one thing I will say is that in the context of this conversation, at least he is addressing the, the structural conditions which create impediments for black men in this society. But it seems to have been like a 180 degree turn away from this kind of thinking. At least he was doing research that demonstrated that there were conditions, structural conditions, which basically disadvantaged black men. All that research is gone. All you hear now is the theoretical and axiological commitments to intersectional thinking. That's all you hear right now. 
You don't hear anything else but that right now. Nothing. And boy, if you even say that black men are disadvantaged, there's going to be a counter argument to show how you are advantaged. That's what's going to happen. I'm just telling the truth. I've seen it. I've witnessed it a million times in the academy. So anyway, they are relatively uninvolved in such prominent feminist issues as pornography, sexual harassment, abortion, uh, excuse me, abortion, comparable pay, rape, etc. Ain't the truth now, bruh. They done took that up. They done took white women's shit and ran with it. Like super hard. I mean, they own it. Like that one song, I'm on it, I be on it all day. <laughs> they own that, man. Moreover, they are more traditional in their definition of the roles that men and women should play in society and in the family. No longer the case, sir. While their attitudes remain very traditional, the family lifestyles and arrangements of blacks are definitely unconventional. After examining the contemporary forms of black families, I explain it as a conflict between family ideology and structural conditions. So changes in black family structure. So we already know. Look, going back to the quote, going back to the stat. In 74, Zelnick and Kant Katner, Kantner revealed that 35% of white teenagers terminated their first pregnancy by abortion compared to 4% of black teenagers. So black people were not getting abortions. And then not only that, blacks were more married. They were more married than white people. But something changed, okay? Something changed. So let's talk about the changes in the black family structure. Then I'm going to take a quick break. Then I'm going to read one more section. Then I'll read the rest of this tomorrow. So he goes on to say, probably the most significant change in the black family during the last 30 years has been the proliferative growth of female-headed households. When the Moynihan Report, 1965, was first issued, more than three-fourths of all black families with children were headed by a husband and wife. Three-quarters during the Moynihan years. Talking about 65, six years before I was born. Okay? In 82, barely one half of all such families included parents of both sexes. Those households headed by black women had a median income of 7,458 in comparison with the median income of 20,586 for married black couples and 26,443 for white married couples. Now, I don't know what you know, man, but this is what I do know. I do know that if you got two incomes... And a case could be made that black men are having a hard time in the economy. But this just can't account for all black men because even middle class black men are encountering these problems in relation to being able to form bonds with women and build stable familial relationships. So even if it is the case that there are a, a, a set of black men who are incorrigible or who are below or beneath standards, what about those men who exist above the standard but still are finding difficulties in having cooperation amongst potential mates and people who they could engage in marriage contracts with? Why that? But I digress. One of the most visible reasons for the dramatic increase in households headed by women has been a corresponding increase in out of wedlock births as a proportion of all births to black women. Give you a thumbs up for that one, sir. This high percentage of out of wedlock births is attributed largely to teenage pregnancies, among which women who turn 20 during the second half of the 1970s, 41% of blacks, but only 19% of whites, had already given birth.
within that same group of young black women, about 75% of all births were out of wedlock, compared with only 25% of births to young white women. Although black women were twice as likely to have had non-marital sexual intercourse as whites by the age of 19, damn, why? Why twice as likely? Their rate of sexual activity was remaining constant while such activity was rapidly increasing among white teenagers. Oh, so white women were catching, white girls were catching up, huh? Not only has the number and proportion of black female-headed households grown rapidly, but the majority of adult black women are not married and living with spouses. In 1982, approximately 56% of all black women over the age of 14 were separated. Div over the age of 14? Like, why even talk about 14? What 14? I don't just don't understand why it starts with that number. 50 56% of all black women over the age of 14 were separated, divorced, widowed, or never married. Under the age of 30, the majority of them fall into the never married category. Past age 30, most of them are listed as divorced or separated, with a small percentage counted among the widowed. So they are not unmarried primarily be, either because they never got married before or they divorced not because they were widowed that's important to understand so either they decided to absolve the marriage contract of their own free will and volition or they never got married to begin with it's not that these men are dying it's that they decided to either dissolve the contract or didn't feel that the contract was worth entering in to begin with the higher rate or the high divorce rate creates a number of female-headed households among black women over age 30. While one out of two white marriages will end in divorce, two out of three black marriages will eventually dissolve. Moreover, black women who divorce are less likely than their white counterparts to remarry. Currently, one in four adult black women are divorced. So a quarter of black women in 83 were divorced that's a that's a significant statistic i bet you the number's higher now i guarantee the ratio is higher now some 20 years since the publication of the moynihan report the figures he cites as evidence that the black family uh, family was deteriorating have doubled almost tripled in some areas how is it that a group that regards family life as its most important source of satisfaction finds a majority of its women unmarried? Why does a group with traditional moral values, or excuse me, more traditional sexual values, not, this, got, this has me confused right here with this line right here. How is it that a group that regards family life as its most important source of satisfaction finds a majority of its women unmarried. Why does a group with more traditional sexual values than its white peers, you just said earlier, two paragraphs ago, that underage or young black women were having sex at twice the rate as white women. But then you're talking about sexual moral values related to chastity and waiting to engage in copulation and sexual intercourse. I'm just, I'm scratching my head about that. I just, I don't understand it. I don't see how it fits. Why does a group with more traditional sexual values than its white peers have a majority of its children out of wedlock? Maybe perhaps because they don't hold those traditional values. Finally, we must ask how a group that places such importance on the traditional nuclear family finds a near majority of its members living in single parent households. While a number of reasons have been cited by theorists, I suggest that the dominant force can be found in structural conditions of the black population. Now, 
Rashid Barnes, thank you so much for the uh, donation, sir. I appreciate that. I want to give you a shout out right now. Thank you. What I'm going to do right now is uh, enforce Windu. Thank you again for the uh, donation, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. What I want to do right now is uh, take a brief break so I can gather my uh, voice and my breath again, and then I'll continue on this. But I'm only going to read one more section, and then I'll follow up with this tomorrow. But I guarantee you, when he starts to talk about the structural conditions of black folks, he's going to be talking primarily about the structural conditions of black men. I guarantee you the target is going to be placed on black men's backs. But at least I'll give him credit for this. At least he's going to talk about and define and outline structural conditions which are deleterious to black men's lives. Whereas you don't even hear any of this discussion anymore. There is no discussion hardly at all. Except for a few scholars. And you know who they are. They're the Currys, the Johnsons, the Neals, and so on and so forth. Not very many. It's almost as, as if it's taboo to have a conversation about structural conditions which impede the flourishing, the function, and the thriving of black male life without somehow being misogynistic or engaging in misogyn war. It's just the facts, the way I see it. So I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back from the break, I'll get right back into it. See you in a second. The content of this channel is for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. We're back. I'm the G with a PhD. You're tuned in to the Green Gorilla channel. It's the place where black men can express themselves freely, straight up, no chases. If you're scared, go to church. If you don't like to hear negative epithets, moment, you know, interspersed within the commentary, please click off. Because every now and then I use pejorative terminology, meaning you might hear the F-bomb or the S-word or the A-word or any number of words conjoined together for emphatic reasons. <laughs> but we're having a conversation about the black family. And we're having a conversation about it using a heuristic. Namely, we're reading a paper from a black male scholar by the name of Robert Staples. And we're gathering his ideas about why there's a certain set of traditional values and ideals that black people have about black family life, but they're not actually living up to those ideals by any stretch of the imagination. 
So we're going to now begin to scratch the surface and explore what he perceives as the causes, the reasons for which this is not happening. Why there's dissonance or discord between the ideals and the practices of black people as it pertains to family life and dedication and the immersion of black people into family life. Okay, so that's where we are. So, and I'm only going to read one more section and I'm out of here. All right? So this section is not that long. Well, actually, it is kind of long. Damn, this, this thing is super long. But I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it anyway. I told you I was, so me being a man of my word, I'm going to get through it. So anyway, he says in a section entitled Family Ideology Versus Social Conditions, the basis of a stable family rests on the willingness and ability of men and women to marry, bear, and rear children and fulfill socially prescribed familial roles. Get that? Let's, there's a lot packed in there. There's a, lot, there's a lot packed in there. In other words, look, you want a stable family, it's going to rest on the, ab the ability and the willingness of men and women, both of them, to marry, bear and will children, uh, rear children, and fulfill, not what they have to fulfill in order to make it work, but socially prescribed familial roles. In the case of women, those roles have been defined traditionally as the carrying out of domestic functions such as cooking and cleaning, giving birth to children, and socializing them, providing sexual gratification, companionship, and emotional support to their husbands. There is an abundant evidence that black women are willing and able to fulfill those roles. Uh-oh, I can hear the brothers right now. <laughs> I can hear it now, man. Because I just don't see that right now. I don't see that. And I'm, I'm gonna, what's partially responsible for it, I think, is black women's increasing acceptance and adoptance of the norms associated with second and third wave feminism. These things no longer apply. They just do not. They don't. Can you can you imagine this? Did you do you hear what he's outlining? In the case of women, these traditional roles, cooking and cleaning, giving birth to children, we, they can do that, and socializing them. The school system is doing that because they going to work or whatever else it is that they're doing. So they're not even having time. When you're a single parent, how are you able to socialize children? You spend more time at your job and in the bed than you do socializing your children. You don't have the capacity or the opportunity to socialize your children in that kind of social arrangement or familial condition. That's just the facts, okay? Emotional support to their husbands Man, conversely, the roles of men in the family are more narrowly confined to economic provider and family leader. But there are indications that a majority of black American males cannot implement those roles. When it comes to a choice between remaining single or getting married, individuals often do a cost benefit analysis. Marriage is frequently a quid pro quo arrangement. It's an exchange arrangement. I'm doing this for something. What do I get out of the deal? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Men traditionally, I, this, is the fuck, this is the fucked up thing about this. Because a lot of black men are being reared by women and they're not being socially educated as to what their role supposedly in the family is supposed to be to begin with, you got a lot of men who are marrying women 
predicated upon the concept of love. It's not an exchange for them. They don't see it as an exchange. It's a lot of men are beginning to think differently about it, but the question is, if the divorce rate is that high, and if the women's liberation movement has changed the mores and the ideals about what traditional roles men and women are supposed to play in the family, what is it in for a man? What's the quid pro quo for the man? What's in it for him? What is in it for him? I'd like to know, what is in marriage for men? What is the reason for it? What's the point? I'm asking the question. I'm just being, I'm being honest. What is the point? I said I was going to go through this all. But you know, I'm going to stop short here. And I'm going to ask you. You you give me, you tell me what the reason is. You tell me what the reason is. I would like to know. What is the point? What is the what is the point? If the if if the relationship can be easily terminated, if the relationship is just predicated upon what I can give someone, but then they have ideals about the relationship such that I don't have to give anything back, such that you have to provide all of the traditional characteristics or fulfill all the traditional roles associated with masculinity and manliness but that other person does not have to correspondingly do the same what is in it what, what's the point of it i'm waiting i've given you the invite I'm asking a man, woman, or child to come up and tell me what's in it for a man. We know what a man is supposed to do for a woman. I'm just asking a question. I'm not even trying to be rude about it. I'm not even trying to be rude about it. What is in it for the man? I mean, a lot can go wrong with these with these unions. You can find yourself in a divorce, all of your property gone. Everything you ever worked for gone. You can find yourself alienated from your children. That bond, gone. Gone, gone, gone. And you can find yourself in jail with your reputation and your career destroyed. What is the point anymore? I'm just being honest about it. So it seems like I have no takers on to join me in this chat. And I don't want to be in this chat forever and ever and ever and ever, even if it does get started. But I'm about to end this, and I will resume this tomorrow. OK, because I, I just don't have the energy to go through all this, this rigmarole and hear all this nonsense. Right. About because it's a, we are an hour into it. I'm going to start cutting my shows to an hour. All these three hour, four hour shows and shit. No, man, that's too much, man. I 
I'm just asking the question. Because the, the conditions have changed. And this is my thinking about it, right? Just my initial thoughts. To me, what I thought, this, this was my ideal about it. My idea was, look, whoever is able to make the most cash or use whatever resources are available should utilize the resources in order to try to fulfill goals and objectives that they mutually develop together. Because if that's supposed to actually be your mate, your wife, one would think this is a person whom you could actually build with and cooperate with and play team ball with. But nowadays, men are finding themselves in these contentious positions with the women that they associate with. And you're always going to have little subtle disagreements, but these things are getting blown out of proportion nowadays. Then you got to bring in the referees. Oftentimes, the referees are the boys in blue. See Truth the Revelator, man. Welcome to the show. What's going on, bro? What's up, man? How you doing? How are you, I'm man? It's going to make it real short. I just say that uh, the bottom line is that there is no point to it. I mean, there's no point for men today to get married. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, marriage, dating. It's a shit show. You know, there's no benefit for men to get married today. That, that's all I wanted to say, Double G. There's no benefit okay. at all. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. And I've actually and I've actually been married and I've gone through the rigmarole, you know. And um I'm quite happy with the life I got right now. No responsibilities, no chick to worry about, no getting into the arguments and all that nonsense. And you know, nah, nah, I, I I'm perfectly fine as everything as it is now. So there's no point. No point at all. And see, look, but but if as it was that you knew that you had a partner that you would build with for life, you knew that you were going to be involved in a situation in which you both were going to work through your problems and your difficulties and not bail on one another because as it was said early, hold on, somebody says there's no sound. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I, so he says no sound. Somebody named DeAndre says no sound, GG. I got sound. So yeah, I can it, hear you. Yeah, so uh, if, if you can't hear sound out there in the stream, somebody put a two out there. So I, if it says two, I know you don't hear it. That's a no. But anyway, uh, so if you know that you're going to actually be with someone and you can build with that individual for life and you'll work through whatever problems you got, What's what's that? Because as as we saw in one of the the stats of this paper, like less than almost like three percent of black women were unmarried. Right. Three percent. But now it's a whole but, different situation, man. A, a a totally different situation. Yeah, it's like night and day. It is just completely flipped. You know, and um, as we all know, um, definitely feminism had a had a definitely had um, <laughs> had its hand in it. It had a it was a huge factor in it. Yeah, you know? I, I I think so. Um, but you know, white women are still married. Yeah, you're, and, that's and the, most that's even the funny them, part about it. <laughs> and even even them kicking that shit, I've seen it with my own eyes, man. I've seen them talk that crush the smash the patriarchy shit and go home to their husband. I've seen it. You know the funny the, the funny thing is the joke the joke is on black women because they don't understand that it is important you know for them you know to be um you know to be bonded with us you know as as black men and you know I it's for fucking fifty years man and they still don't fucking get it it's like they just they fall for the they fall for the banana in the tailpipe every fucking time but see here's the thing. It ain't just see see the argument he's going to end up making, and I know what he's going to end up saying, but I'm a, I'm gonna cover it tomorrow in greater detail. But what he's going to end up saying is that black men are a pool of lousy candidates for marriage yeah, because yeah. of the, because, because of the structural yep. conditions which 
exist within the United States. Yeah, and so therefore, men must. can't live up to their traditional values. But then the, this begs the question, what were the social and economic conditions during segregation? What, what made them so much better than those that, that exist now? Exactly. What makes them so, what makes the conditions now so much different from the conditions back then? If you, if you think about it, it's a lot worse now because of the racial wealth gap. It got wider. Man, hey, man, let me, I got some other people, man, who want to join in. So I'm going to get them in. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to do panels, so I'm going to uh, cut you yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Thank you no for problem, uh, coming through, bro. Thanks for, right. thanks for bringing me on. Appreciate it, brother. Damon Harris, what's good, my brother? Welcome to the what's stream. What's good, what's brother? I'm on, I'm on now, but I'm going to share what I'm going to share with you about it. Um, I put in the chat, the chat, keep your nuts to your nuts off to, to a certain extent. And and for because what's good on now is, is that what could happen, what, what, what I'm, what, what I'm going on in Philly, that a lot of, a lot, a lot of, a lot of them that choose and do sexuality over, over being in a relationship. With some with 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 with, 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 with a heterosexual man, you got, you got some glitches. You got some glitching going off, on. Off, off, out of Alex. Yeah, you got some echo going on, Damon. Yeah, yeah, I do. Hold on. Can you hear me? Can you? I can hear you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And and right now, men what men what pain is that? Yeah, the echo is still there, brother. Oh, oh, really? Where coming from? Do you have uh you have YouTube on? Yeah. Cut YouTube off. Get rid of it. Uh, he didn't I didn't mean get rid of the stream, yo. I just said cut the cut the YouTube off. He'll come in. He's I rock with you, dog. It's just we gotta we gotta get that straight though. Technical difficulties. Malika, what's going on, my brother? Peace, peace, homie. What's going on, man? What's happening? Man, this is kind of crazy. This is crazy, you know. Uh, Sister Shara Lee said this back in uh, 1990, even bring up today. Our biggest problem is not just having a higher educated class. The problem is black men and black women have a problem of not getting along. If you want to have a better black family, see, men, we have no problem working and wanting to build a family. Ice Cube did that three weeks ago. But then you seen with the cocktails with the queens, them four women was ready to shoot them down. Cube's view was about the people. Black men, we have no problem wanting to build for our future and our people. But the problem is black women have been given the okie doke and they've been given a bad bill of goods to make you think you don't need your man. But if you want your man to be a leader, if you want him to do it, you want him to do it on your terms. We don't roll like that. Black men, we have leadership and we have been hardwired to be leaders the way we have to do through a masculine lens and through masculine nature. How are you gonna to try to make a man lead you through a feminine mindset? How are we gonna lead with that? That's why we have a fucked up community right now and that's why I have this gynocratic bullshit. The problem yeah. is you have brothers, and here's the funny thing, and if any sisters are listening out there, we love you. We do wanna be with you. But the problem is you have a lot of brothers waking up, you have a lot of brothers with platforms like this, Brothers like BGS, Angry Man, um, Dr. Tia Sean Johnson, it, we're waking up because we're just tired of the bullshit. Just like you said, if we get married, if I get married, I'm a, I'm a 70s baby just like you, brother. I come from Generation X. We were the canary in the coal mine. Everything was given to us. Gangster rap, crack, AIDS. We were, the, we were the test dummies for that. And we grew up and we saw our community is getting pulled apart and just slowly seeing black women getting pushed up. Kendra D just did a video showing and seeing how the way black boys and black men have been segmented to be losers. But the thing is, if you, me and other brothers get out of the mud and we try to get this in this 21st century in 2021, trying to do something, trying to make it, and we want to get with a woman that don't want to get with our program. She don't want to lose weight. She don't want to change her attitude. She don't want to take bullshit out of her hair. She don't want to stop dealing with a lot of bullshit. And we're trying to grow. Why do we want to deal with that? 
but then you get mad because we have options. You get mad because we put this in your face. What benefit do I get from marrying you? Take your vagina out of the way, take your looks out of the way because looks fade. Are you going to be a woman that has my back? If I have a business, if I'm a working man, if I'm doing what I have to do, are you going to be that woman by my side that I can build a legacy? Yes, what do you yeah, bring yeah. to the table? And that's one of the biggest problems that we have. And then we tell her and we sit down and we say, look at the landscape that we're in. We're in COVID. People are separated. But if I meet up with you, you meet up with me, how are we going to build ourselves to get out of this COVID? And if we're going to try to do something together, I don't give a damn about what's going on. I'm talking about what we're going to build together. I hear you. And this is the thing where you have a majority of women, especially our black women, if it doesn't benefit them, meaning if it doesn't benefit them right now, you know, if it doesn't deal with their instant gratification, instead of not realizing delayed gratification, okay, babe, me and you, we get together, we do something. Maybe we might not have something, but maybe our children, our children's children can have something. Black women don't want to feel that. They want their shit right now. What am I going to get from you, nigga? What can you do for me? Like Dan Jackson said, what have you done for me lately? Or what can you do for me now, nigga? But then you say to her, bitch, what can you do for me? From the rip, I have from the rip, I have to come with everything. I have to come with a good job. I have to come with no drama, even if I have a kid, no drama from my baby mama. I have to come having no lesser than a bachelor's degree. I have to come with making six figures. I have to come that I have to lay pipe and fuck you well. I have to come and make sure everything is okay. But what do I have to expect from you? I have to take your kids' bullshit. I have to take your baby daddy's bullshit. I have to take you overweight. I have to take you with no edges. I have to take you with all your drama. I got to hear all the shit from your family. I got to hear all your shit from your girlfriends. I got to deal with everything from you. But if I'm a man who has made it out the mud, it doesn't even matter if I'm white collar, blue collar, whatever. If I have my shit together. And thing is, for us, man, Gigi, just having our shit together is just surviving. See, for the black man, it's just we doing enough that we can make make it day by day. We can pay our bills. We live them right. We can come home. We don't get shot out in the street. We cool. We can smile. We doing okay. We have some money saved up. If we have children, we can say, here, son, here, daughter, this is what I want you to do. Take this money. Take this, whatever it is, and we can live our life. But the thing is, black women, they want you to change water into wine. They want you to do all this other shit. Save them. Save the world. But we got to do it their way. No, it's not happening that way. And they get mad because if you have other options, okay, if you're going to save yourself, black man, you go to another woman from another race or another African woman from another from another area of the, of the world, you happy because you can do that. But it's like, how dare you choose that? Well, why can't I choose? Because now, because we're choosing because you want us to be there. You still, you might not want to be with us, but you still want us to be around to be your fall guy. And I hear that's you, not man. what we have. Look, I hear you venting, bro. You know, look, the, the only thing I can say is, man, you know, I, I've had some good black women. I've had some bad ones, man. You know, uh, uh, it's just that, you know, there's a lot that can go wrong, man, it, when the situation goes wrong. And, uh, you know, it, it, it can lead to ruin for a man. Uh-huh. And not necessarily so for a woman, you know what I'm saying. So uh, it's just it's a lot to risk. Um, and then you know there's too many demands, you know. Exactly. Uh, you know too many too many demands, and then like when they don't get what they want, then there's a temper tantrum. Uh huh. You know, or or there might even be violence or threats. You know what I'm saying, or like you know just real irrational bipolar type behavior. You know what I'm saying. So. Dealing with that, you know, like, uh, that's a lot to deal with, man. All the neck rolling, the finger snapping, the hand clapping. But can I say something to that, Gigi? Yeah, go ahead. All of that, what you just said, imagine that for 50, 60 years in our community. And then it gets to the point where if you're dating somebody and you see that and you just shake your head and you just put your hands up and say, I'm good. I'm good. And see, you know, the problem is, man, look, men and women both come with their own set of problems to anything, right? But, you know, look, all I can say is, man, 
unless both people are willing to talk about what kind of faults they have and try to change for the better, ain't nothing going to happen, man. You know, and, and right now, I just don't see it happening at the current moment, man, because the whole framework, the narrative, the discourse is centered uh. around what black men are fucking not doing. And what well, can I ask you a question? Doing. Do you think we brothers, we have no problem coming to the table talking about our own problems too? I, I believe that there are brothers, myself, you, you, and a bunch of other brothers, even brothers on your pet in in the um in the chat, have no problem coming and admitting and holding themselves accountable that yes, we have our shit and we did some things and we apologize for doing that, but what can we start off doing? You know, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, look, it takes if you want to reconcile a, a relationship, man, both parties have to be willing to do it. And right now, I don't think it's, it's I don't see it happening at the current moment, man. There's an impasse between us, man. It mm -hmm. is what it is. And, you know, I, I've seen some things in the public recently, which leads me to believe that, uh, you know, I just don't see it being healed anytime quickly. First of all, you got black men that don't want to say anything about it. They mm -hmm. are so scared. I mean, I've never seen black men so fucking afraid in my life, man. Like, niggas are getting in the car and go shoot a motherfucker dead, but they won't say something about what's going on in, 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 in you know, macroscopically amongst men and women. I just, I don't understand it, man. I've never we've seen- Because we been conditioned, brother. We've been I've never conditioned. Seen, I've, never, I've never seen anything like this in my life, man. I've seen black men like refuse to talk to each other or like cape super hard or, you know, like I, I've always said, that, and this is just a principle of feminism in and of itself. Uh -huh. They don't want to be treated like children. They don't want to walk 10 steps behind. They don't want to be put on a pedestal. Okay, so now I'm treating you like an equal. It's like I would treat any other man or anybody else. You on some fucking bullshit. You can't tell me that. I, I'm a woman. I need to be respected. Look. What the fuck can be done in? You can't have a relationship with somebody that you can't talk to with, about your problems or what you got an issue with. That's not a relationship. That's a, it is a relationship, but it's not a fucking mutual relationship. Uh -huh. That's a relationship of fucking fealty. Uh -huh. I'm not involved in that, man. I don't have time for that, bro. So I got one more person, man, waiting to talk. He's been waiting for quite a bit of time, Malika. So it's let me get him in. It's a pleasure, brother. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure to talk to you, man. Peace. Peace. Brother Ricky, what's going on with you? How you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. Ricky, are you there? I know I had you on pause for quite a bit of time, but are you there? Oh, yeah. I'm here. I had to mute the microphone. I thought that was me echoing when the uh, other gentleman was on. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? Shoot, I'm oh, you got, you got to touch your YouTube ball. ball. Oh, shoot. Let me do that. Give me one second. Am I still echoing? Not yet. Not I mean, yet. Not at all. I mean, not at all. Well, yeah, yeah, you're, well, still, yeah, you're echoing. still echoing. Close, Close out your out YouTube, your YouTube window. window. All right, doing it right now. All right, what about now? You're good to go. Good you're to Gucci. go. You're Gucci. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm echoing. I'm echoing. Okay, let me put some earphones in. You got YouTube, you got YouTube turned, YouTube turned off? off? Yeah, YouTube's turned off. I'm in stream. Turn off your echo cancellation. Oh yeah. Let me turn. Let me try to. Let me try to. Let me try to echo. Let me try to echo. Check, 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 check. Yeah, it's still going yeah, it's on. Still going on. What about now? Check. check, check. Yeah, I still go ahead, brother. Go ahead, speak your piece. Speak your piece. All right. So what I'm thinking um, nowadays that people aren't really uh, comfortable talking about is that these white liberal women came into our neighborhoods and they fucked our women up. We can't go. I mean, it's kind of like what you were saying earlier. You seen um, Becky coming to the hood. Talk all that independent woman shit, and she goes home and she's with her husband. Hillary Clinton's a prime example of that. Um, our women now are to the point where they hate us, but they worship the white woman and they worship the white man, which is why, you know, I have a platform on TikTok. And, you know, I was spitting facts about Kamala Harris, and these black women just jumped all down my shit, right? And it's like, but she's not even a, an ADOS. She don't even have, you know, she don't even have the credentials to say she's African American or black or whatever. She, uh, you know, as far as like you know, trying to stand up for for uh, racial um, justice, you know, that's what we were doing all summer long. But yet, and still, only thing Joe Biden had to do was uh, stick a, a, a an illusion of a black woman in front of us, and everybody's under their spell. So I'm like, 
And then I look at it from, you know, from hindsight now. I see a lot of these uh, men dressed up as women that rather, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they'll jump our shit for going out with Becky. But, you know, if we put on pantyhose and a damn skirt, they're cool with it. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't, it's a big psychological hiccup there. And I think what's happening is a lot of us brothers are waking up just like the brother was saying on the line before. We got options and we're taking those options. But the thing is, they want to hold us guilty or try to guilt us or shame us to stand and sticking around and taking their bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? Can you hear me? Check, check. Hold on, man. Yeah, I, I had my mic muted because it was echoing. Okay. So I didn't want to have it echoing. And I thought I started talking, and it, you know, the normal course of action for me is to, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm being my mic. Yeah, but, 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 but here's the deal, man. Uh, I'm going to mute you uh, and see if there's any echo still going on. Like, look, man. We're dealing with a lot of forces coming at us, crashing on us at the same time. I mean, and we got to get ourselves together, man. We got to go back to the, the drawing board. That's all I can say. Like, I, I just, I tried to get into relationships with women. Neither one of them worked. And, I mean, I got two baby mamas. You know, uh, it, it is what it is. I didn't expect for this to occur. Didn't expect for that to happen. It just is what it is. And the situations black men go through, you know, it's not good enough for them. So, I mean, I guess they're looking for that perfect guy. But, I mean, you're dealing with an, a, a group of people who are subjected to imperfect conditions. So, I mean, either we're going to develop a plan or we're going to work it out or it's everybody for his damn self. And that's just how I see it, man. So, um, that's just how I see it, bro. So, yeah, so uh, with, with me, you know, I look at, you know, um, hindsight's twenty twenty, but now I'm looking back at things and um, there's no way possible that I can get my, I, I, I've been trying to figure out what could be a good formula to bring our community back together. But the women want to be in charge. And then the men that like on your, that sits on the boards of the NAACP, Urban League, things like that, they pray, you know, they fold for these women. It's kind of like what you're saying. They, they're scared of these women. They'll, they'll shoot me over a pair of shoes. But at the same damn time, uh, all the thing a woman got to do is get in front of them and they just like cower down. I don't get it. Well, uh, let me let me put you on mute. Okay, so and then I'm out, out of here after this. Look, here's the deal, man. This is just my opinion. I have to do some more research on it. It's just an opinion until I make I can make it, you know, a, a, a educated opinion. But right now we're dealing with a conceptualization of womanhood that comes from white womanhood, developed in an era. Uh, the Victorian age, a one when, you know, women were perceived to be morally superior to men, where women didn't suffer from the same kind of vices and the same kind of, you know, uh, kind of viciousness that men did. Because men, I mean, you know, they went out and they did, you know, heinous acts, especially white men. They went out and they Rape, pillaged, and plundered. That's what they did. That was part of their MO. Okay? And they felt that their women were better than that. And they kept their women tucked away. Right? And so this notion, this, this perfect notion of womanhood, this revered status of womanhood, it remains and it's seeped off into the black community. I don't know what this is. Like, I... I've never been spellbound by this idea that anybody who shits on a toilet and who takes a piss is somehow needs to be revered just because they exist. Dogs don't do that shit. Cats don't do that shit. I'm guarantee you mice, schools of fish, birds, no fucking body just takes somebody in just because they are. The same way with men, with women, if women say they're not willing to deal with men 
who are subjected to the type of conditions that we're subjected to, all right, then go and kick rocks. Don't get involved with us. Do you. But don't sit there and tell us what we need to be doing. Fuck it. If you already made the choice that you're not going to fuck with us, don't fuck with us. Don't take us through all this bullshit to exploit us. We already ain't got shit to deal, to begin with. Then you want to take us and put us in the worst position that we was in before we start fucking with you. That's the thing I don't appreciate. That's what I don't like. Because right now, women, you can exploit a man in this culture very easily. Okay? So don't exploit us, man. We already got enough shit on our backs. Amen. Bottom line, man, don't exploit us. Now, there's some good ladies out there. There are some out there, man. But we're looking at, he's talking about structural issues. But look, man, it's a lot of brothers out here who got bread, man, who's still going through the same shit. Big bread. Dr. Dre went through it. Emmett Smith went through it. Michael Jordan went through it. Fuck. Who, how many countless men who are wealthy as hell have everything that can fit into the paradigm of what traditional masculinity is, and they still find themselves in these precarious positions with these women. I find it to be that the more they get, the more they want. I'm just, I'm being honest, man. Like, you, you can't beat fucking Emmy Smith, man. You can't beat him in physicality. You can't beat him in money making. You can't beat him in the honor he has. You can't beat his fucking grind. But he still ain't good enough. Um, who else ain't good enough? I mean, fucking Tiger Woods ain't good enough. Michael Jordan ain't good enough. Okay, so they fucked around. All these guys are fucking around, right? I don't know if Michael Jordan was fucking around. He ain't known to be some philanderer. He's known to be an asshole among men. But I don't know how he is to his women. But you know, the, but the whole point is, you these are men that you can't outdo in terms of traditional masculinity. And the, the shit that they was in wasn't good enough for their women. So what the fuck is good enough? What is good enough? I just don't know what's good enough. That's what I, I, I just don't know what's good enough, man. So having said all that, man, I'm about to burn up out of here. Uh, I ain't going to stay on here much longer, man. I ain't even know I was going to be here this long. Uh, I thought hey, I was gonna, me on. <laughs> all right on, bro. We're going to get you right with the, them echoes, though. But, but uh, right. keep coming back, bro. Holla. I will. Holla. Yeah, so look, you know, the things I'm saying, I'm not saying in order to act like I'm a hater. This, this has nothing to do with misogyny, none of that shit. It's just like, if a relationship is a quid pro quo, it's got to be mutually beneficial to both parties, man. And both parties have to take responsibility for what is functional or dysfunctional within the context of the interaction between us, whether it be macroscopically or microscopically, like on a macro level or on a micro level. And everybody has to be able to speak freely and, and say what they got to say and get it on the table. That's why I'm glad it's even a space like this where we can even talk at all. But I'm going to come back tomorrow and read the rest of this. You know, uh, I ain't got all the answers. Some of the things I may be saying may be erroneous. I don't know, man. All I can do is tell you how I feel. And I feel like I should at least be able to express my feelings about this issue. It's a lot of traps and pitfalls for men in the context of relationships nowadays. A lot. A whole hell of a lot. So you better be careful, man. Be careful. Drape Toman says, keep it like this, my brother. I was smarter before I went to an integrated school. Women don't love us. It's just our turn. <laughs> I hear you, brother. And then my man, uh, T Fitness for You, came down with a donation. I appreciate your, uh, your help, brother. I got some new things I'm working on, man. I'm trying to always keep everything uh, updated and upgraded with the look of the show and with the way I approach the show. So hopefully I can you know, interpolate some different elements in the near future and make the show even look, look better and more entertaining and make it even more informative in the by and by. But having said all that, man, it is a Friday night. 
And uh, I'm going to leave y'all to y'all devices, man. I'm about to go watch The Mandalorian, man. So I'll holler at y'all, man. Y'all be good. Peace. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Phenomenon, I shine like Orion, I came in a rap gang to smack it up like Heron, transform it like Megatron, wait, like Yamatron, most rappers are some peons, I'ma starve them like Ramadan, I'm troublesome, you don't really want no troublesome, cause I pop guns like hood, tick, do bubble gum, my bin gum, gon' stay that way, till kingdom come, when the sun I'm at, unleash a demon of Polygon, I'm heavy son, got more knowledge than Farrakhan, more gang than Cap, comma that bitch, I'm named Don Juan, stay lit off some Shandan, made by Bacardi Rams, stay great to some Nordstrom, call me that Dapper Don, more wider than Genghis Khan, the Demibus, the Taliban niggas bigger than silicon Get hit like a dot com Like soldiers in Lebanon I'm bringing that red rum When I go through with you son You gon' think I'll see Ram Run! I carry weight like a heavyweight Break more cakes than patty cake Watch the fiends salivate You a lightweight Phantom weight Better contemplate If you violate Make you levitate to the pearly gates I fascinate when I conversate From the show me state Where these niggas stop the hate And hot murder rate Or the waste But this flow is just a taste of God's grace Shining this light in an ugly place In a prophecy Got more wisdom than Socrates for life. You don't really want no parts of me, can't you see? I'm sticker than Mephistopheles, stronger than Hercules More dangerous than the third Damocles The MCs crying me, pretty please I went up they white tees, knock them out they wallabies Now they touch my deliries But coming up short in the little seas when I break out the killer bees I stuck the music by Kirkasi, hit chicks look like Ashanti When I'm breaking them off, they yell out I'm poppy You rack rappers is sloppy, you can't stop me with that We can sorry, copy, copy, malarkey like Frankenstein, rock hotter than Palestine. You slimes, dropping dimes, a snake, and serpent tide. Take stand the steamy glow like Nas with his big shine. All you hate is cold in it, cold sores, need calamine. But my hot shit like red brick, eating your head. Leave the sour taste up in your mouth like him in heads, like simply red. Wasted some years up in the feds when I touch down, hold dirty red that gave me head. I got higher vision for higher living. I'm highly driven. I'm acting women like it's some sort of sick religion. Driving an impala sitting on at least 20 inches and they spinning just like the planets in the solar system. Black country people. People, over in Africa, down to America, black country people, uh, we make all the world go round and round, yeah. black country people, uh, up in Canada, down to Jamaica, black country people, uh, we make all the world go round and around.